Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Likas. Call up and congratulate you on being the number one pick. I thought we'll get you flowers if you guys just give us one day when you shut the hell up. <laughs> Ever since I listened to you, Tom, I haven't been in a relationship. I'm not spending a single dollar. Good for you. Don't be pussy, man. We can their wife first, take their balls back, and go out with the boys or something. You have zero paternal instinct to spread your seed and procreate. Well, I like spreading my seed mostly into the other end of a latex condom. Now, why did you have a girlfriend again? Uh, I was young and, uh, you know, 16 when I got in the relationship, and I didn't know who Mr. Lycus was. Didn't know what Lycus 101 was at that time. But uh, now I rock to a different tune, if you will. <laughs> so you don't believe that marriage could be happy? You don't believe that it could bring people happiness? Yeah, you know, I think there's people who uh, jump from an airplane and uh, they're happy. At least till they hit the oh ground. Feels like you're flying. Oh, what a wonderful time you must be having. Oh, I am. This is the best job in the world. I bet. Anyone would love to have your job. What a catharsis. What a wonderful narcissistic rage you get to have a playground for. I heard there's a bunch of frat boys at UCSB that put an antenna on top of their house and they get your show, so touche, Tom. That's how, well, that, that's how you stay on the air because people want to hear your show so bad, they put up a tower. Interesting. Maybe I'll go hang out at the frat house. Well, just remember, they're going to expect you to put out. Why should we sign contracts to give you our wealth? Forget it. So why buy the cow and you can get the milk for free, huh? Damn straight. A lot of them are cows in this country, too. She works really hard, she has a really good job, and she doesn't need that kind of stuff, but she kind of expects it because everybody else around is, you know, especially at work. You know, flowers, candy, boyfriend this, husband bought me a diamond ring, whatever. You know, suicide looks a whole lot better than Valentine's Day. I'm not a metrosexual by any means. You know, I enjoy my evenings watching football, reading my NRA magazines, and cleaning my guns and getting ready to go to the shooting range as I'm eating my home-cooked food. I've been with my girlfriend for three years. I have never once been to a chick flick with her. I have never once held her purse in public, okay? I've never even gone out with her on Valentine's Day. I have my balls. I pretty much think that this woman here is just a feminist because she can't get any. Well, it's always pretty much the same thing. Women who demonstrate against pornography, you wouldn't want to see naked anyway. Women who demonstrate against abortion can't get laid. Uh -huh. And I think women who complain about the objectification of women are women with mustaches and sideburns <laughs> who can't get a guy to look at. Them. Robin, what did you want to say here to Julie? You're calling up and saying you're going to get rid of your boyfriend because he no, wasn't the exactly wrong gift the first for you. Out of my mouth. Call him asked, are you? Well, gonna... I didn't hear the beginning of the conversation. Well, then you should. If you... Well, then you shouldn't open your big mouth. I'm opening my big mouth because I'm listening to your dumb ass. That's all. Calling a man a slut is redundant. Oh, okay. But then it's also, slut isn't a word you would use as, like, you. Would, that's more referred to as a bad word than just the word man. No, I actually, when I meet a woman, I hope she's a slut. Okay. <laughs> You're disgusting. You're just horrid. From. A place we're not allowed to reveal in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Wow, you're bad. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're gonna need it. 
It's 1-800-5800-TOM. one 800 5800 The Tom Likas Show, powered by Knight Rider, an original two-hour movie event. Round of music. Thank you. Powered by Knight Rider, an original two-hour movie event, Sunday night, February 17th at 9, 8 Central, only on NBC TV. We gotta, we gotta fix that. Just loop it incessantly. Make five minutes of loop. How hard is that? You don't have the original what? Metallica? We gotta fix that. Jesus. Anyway, here we are. It's Friday, and I'm here to do the show. <laughs> this beautiful. Yep. Yeah, you should thank me, really, for stopping by and uh, cracking out the program. Good to have you here. Isn't that nice of me to show up? Despite the fact that I get a large cash stipend for uh, my presence. They do the roll call around 3 o'clock Pacific time. I raise my hand and say present. I was always the jerk who said present. When I was seven, that was high wit. You call every name on the roll. Here, here, here. I was present. Yes, they all hated me when I was seven. You're right. I figured out how to turn that into a fortune. I had no idea at seven what I could do with that. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a text message. Yeah, during, the, uh, during the next break, I will tell you guys why I'm getting text messages now. And, and you're going to laugh your ass off. You are. Turning off my text messaging right now. Unbelievable. Anyway, here we are together again on the radio on this Friday. And uh, on Friday, what we do with the wide open telephones, we talk about some of the things we uh, we talked about this week. Maybe you didn't have a chance to get through. Maybe the phone lines were busy. Maybe you were busy. Uh, we had quite a week this week. Yes, we talked about uh, whether Mexicans would vote for anybody to keep a black man from becoming president. You know. We talked about the cultural differences when it comes to unsightly hair and its removal. We did. Uh, many of you may have tuned out during a very tasteless hour in which we discussed. I thought I'd just turn that off. We discussed a bride who had been uh, wanting to have the uh, the wedding out of the movie My Big Fat Greek Wedding. So uh, she married a big fat Greek guy, and she was, uh, oh, stop. I have to stop this. Uh, anyway, she married some big fat Greek guy, and she herself was uh, none too slim. <laughs> During that first dance, she collapsed and died. That's right. Um, maybe, maybe some of you missed that. And as I said, I think I think she was heard to say it was that one last Saganaki. Yes. And we talked about the fact that email, instant messages, text messages, like the ones I'm getting right now, they're being used more and more in divorce cases. And um, you know, we had uh, quite a week, lots of good phone calls, lots of calls about politics. It was interesting. But those are some of the things we did talk about that you can discuss here with us also. Uh, here are some of the issues we didn't talk about. Maybe you think we should have gotten into some of these. NBC apologized. <laughs> Do we have these? NBC apologized for Jane Fonda. They, they were having a little panel discussion. It was uh, Eve Ensler, the playwright of the the play that every man detests, 
called the Vagina Monologues. Because you know my attitude about the Vagina Monologues. The last thing I want a vagina to do is start talking. So it was Eve Ensler, the playwright of the Vagina Monologues, and Jane Fonda, who by now has got to be 70 years old. I'm not exaggerating. I think she's 70. And uh, Jane was talking about how much she loved the Vagina Monologues. And uh, she was there with Meredith Vieira of the Today Show. And uh, this is what it sounded like. Of course, you won't hear the actual C word. But. And I know when it started, there were some A-list celebrities who came out to help you. But, Jane, you at first were not a big fan of the play. So what turned you around? Well, it wasn't that I wasn't, wasn't a big fan. I hadn't seen the play. I live in Georgia, okay? I was asked <laughs> to do a monologue called <laughs> And I said, I don't think so. i got enough problems. But, <laughs> but then you were invited to go see it. Yes, then I came to New York to see Eve, and I, it changed my life. It really did. Meredith Vieira, rather unfazed by the whole thing. Yes, Jane Fonda said the C word on the Today Show. Which is kind of appropriate since so many C words appear on the Today Show. All you have to do is watch the Today Show. And you'll see. So uh, now, uh, now you go a few days later and Meredith Vieira, who did that interview, apologizes to you the Today Show audience. Um, Jane Fonda inadvertently said a word from the play that you don't say on television. It was a slip, and, and obviously she apologizes, and so do we. We would do nothing to offend the audience. So please accept that apology, and when we come up, uh, we're going to be talking about the secrets to making your love last. A new story. Oh, the first, yeah. this is today from NBC. Yeah, from NBC News, the Today Show. By the way, you know, where is the FCC? By the way, and can I say one other thing? The video clip of this, uncensored, is on the Internet. And if you watch it, this was not an inadvertent slip. Jane Fonda practically looked into the, <laughs> looked into the camera and winked. I mean, she was like, she knew exactly what she was saying and exactly what she was doing. She was just trying to get a funny line on the air. She knew what she was doing. This was not inadvertent. Now, with all the people who've been chased down for saying way less, where is the Federal Communications Commission when, when Jane Fonda says the mother of all curse words, at least when it comes to women, the mother of all curse words? Where's the FCC now? <laughs> then they apologize for it. <laughs> it was inadvertent. Wasn't there another um, another bomb like this dropped on the Today Show just recently? I forget who did it. Somebody else did that recently, too. And NBC apologized for that one as well. It's like, we're the feds. Now, Janet Jackson's boob appeared to pop out inadvertently, but uh, CBS got fined over half a million dollars for that. And the whole broadcasting industry had to jump through hoops for a couple of years. Why is it that, that Jane Fonda didn't... This was not inadvertent. This was blatant. Uh, why wasn't uh, the FCC, uh, you know, mobilized about this? It's pretty outrageous. I don't get it. So anyway, NBC apologizing for Jane Fonda saying the C word on the Today Show. Uh, other issues we didn't really get into this week. Uh, this one I didn't get into because I didn't think most people had seen these hearings who listened to our show. Like, uh, I watched these hearings uh, and then came in that day and I had to debate whether to talk about this or not. But the reality was most people were at work when it happened. It was... Uh, Roger Clemens and his former trainer, Brian McNamee, testifying in front of Congress about steroids and specifically the uh, the use or non-use of steroids and human growth hormone by Roger Clemens. Uh, this was fascinating viewing. And, of course, uh, the politicians were shameless in their attempts to get TV time and to flail around on camera. 
And uh, Roger Clemens, another one bites the dust, another, uh, in my view, another sleazebag liar. Just my opinion. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I, what, what, I don't even know what to say about it. Talking about blood through his designer pants and abscesses on his butt. Talking about a mass on his butt. Talking about the fact that somebody claimed he had to uh, walk around with little band-aids to cover up when he would have a shot because he'd bleed through his pants. And him denying it. <laughs> Roger also doesn't know what a vegan is. There we go. Roger was trying to maintain his good reputation. And all it did was made things worse. And by the way, it was Roger Clemens himself who said he, he wanted to go before Congress. He wanted to testify. Now people are saying there's the possibility that he'll be indicted and charged with perjury. Good work, Roger. <laughs> Yikes. And uh, because I don't know what the question is when these stories come out, but they were big stories this week and we didn't get into them. Yeah, I understand how we choose topics for this program that are based on stories. Uh, in my view, there has to be two or more sides to an issue. You know, and, and when you have a story like the one in Ventura County where a 14-year-old boy was charged with shooting a classmate, he said it was a premeditated hate crime, um, you're not going to get a lot of supporters. You know, it's pretty much everyone's going to say, that's terrible, that's awful. I hope he gets the, the chair. I hope he gets uh, the gas chamber. Hang them high. I hope they fry them. And that's your hour of program with no dramatic tension. Everybody's saying the same thing. So I I didn't really comment on it. I didn't know what you do with it. But it did happen this week. Uh, the, uh, the the charging of the 14-year-old boy happened this week, that is. As well as the uh, situation at Northern Illinois University where a gunman killed five students, then himself, wounds 15 more. He opens fire in a classroom, and it's like, that's terrible, Tom. That's a real tragedy. Next call. Hi, Tom. I agree with the last caller. That's a real tragedy. Let's go to the next call. Hi, Tom. That's terrible. I haven't heard about that until I heard it on your show. That's terrible. And you get 60 minutes of that. So I don't know what the angle is on stories like that when they happen. And that's why we didn't talk about those topics this week. But you can talk about the topics we did talk about or the ones you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the air. All you have to do is dial in. Like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I actually got called out on being a listener of yours the other night. Love it. I was at a bar, and then this girl comes up to me, start talking to her. She goes, once you want to buy me a drink? She goes, sweetie, I never buy a girl a drink until I bang her. She goes, you're a Tom Likas with an show. Go, yes, sir. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. At one 800 800 tom Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. All right. Fifth wide open telephones. Let's say hello here to uh, Jeremiah on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, how are you doing? I'm okay. Yeah, I uh, heard you talking about Jane Fonda and her little C-word slip up. By the way, I, I, uh, a listener named Todd uh, just wrote to me. And uh, he said back on January the 15th, it was Diane Keaton who used the F word on the Today Show. Yeah. So no. I guess if you're a, an aging female and you want to curse on a, a female-oriented TV show, it's perfectly okay. Yeah, well, you know the answer as well as I do, Tom. It's not about censoring a word. They're trying to censor thoughts and ideas. Well, that that's a whole other question as to whether there should be any censorship of what's on television and radio. And I am a libertarian when it comes to that. I think the government has more important things to do uh, than worrying about this kind of thing. 
I do too. We're spending a lot of money trying to make sure that, you know, the minds of our children don't get warped by, you know, illogical ideas or something that doesn't fit into the norm. But, um, you know, this, this whole censorship thing is becoming so accepted in our society. I see it trickling down into, out of the media forms and into actual life situations. And everybody else sees it around. They're just, I don't know if they're acknowledging it or not. But we do it to ourselves. We started picking up these PC terms. You know, you can't say janitor anymore. You're going to say uh, maintenance technician or facilities manager. The guy still takes out the trash. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. Now, by the way, Diane Keaton was not the Today Show. It was Good Morning America. But same difference. I mean, you know. Aging female, morning TV show. Here's Diane Keaton on Good Morning America. I'd like to have lips like that. <laughs> then I wouldn't have worked on my f***ing personality. Or my, my, excuse me, my personality. If I had also lips like crime. yours, I'd be better also off. A crime. My life would be better. I'd be married. And I was thin little I was skinny say, lips. What am I going to do? My mother's going to work on your personality with soap in your mouth is what she's going to do. Soap in her mouth. I know. Excuse me. I shouldn't have said anything like that. Uh, yeah, shouldn't have said anything like that. You know, every radio station in the country had to go out and buy these expensive delay systems. Right now, I'm in a 70-second delay because of what I might say. Meanwhile, the ABC television network and the NBC television network, no obligation to have a delay. The F word, the C word, it's perfectly okay. The hell is that all about? I mean, you see what I'm saying, Jeremiah? Why is it that people, when you talk about the censoring of thoughts... I think there's a gender issue here because the Oprah Winfrey show has had, uh, as Howard Stern has pointed out repeatedly, the Oprah Winfrey show has been replete with uh, descriptions of oral sex, and I mean really graphic stuff, for which they have never, ever been cited. And then you have these uh, these old bags going on these morning shows that are aimed at, 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 at old broads uh, uh, using the F word or the C word, and the government doesn't care. It's only programming that's aimed at men, like Howard Stern, and like other shows that are aimed at men. Those are the ones they go after. You know, but the primary listers of, of, of radio talk shows are men. I wonder if that has something to do with the age and the gender of the people who are calling in and complaining. So what happens? After a certain age, you're, you're allowed to go on, say, the F word or the C word on TV? Why doesn't the government do anything about that? I don't even know, Tom. And, and they're, know, yeah, by the way, they're just yucking it up. I, wait, why isn't there a delay? A delay button. You tell me ABC, the Walt Disney Company, they can't afford a delay? And if you miss something on the delay, you get fined a couple million, don't you? Well, th well it's not a couple of million. It's $325,000. Wow, it might as well be a million to me, Tom. When it really is inadvertent. By the way, uh, Diane Keaton may have been in inadvertent. I do not believe Jane Fonda's comment was inadvertent. If you, if you could see the look on her face, she knew exactly what she was doing. She thought up a funny line to say, and then she said it. Let's play that again. Jane Fonda. Do we have Jane Fonda, that cut from the Today Show? Here's Jane Fonda being interviewed by uh, Meredith Vieira. Now, you can only hear her voice. You can't see her face. But when you hear the way she delivers, this this was like a joke. that She, she actually sat there while the other people were talking and thought up some wise-ass thing to say. And I know when it started, there were some A-list celebrities who came out to help you. But, Jane, you at first were not a big fan of the play. So what turned you around? Well, it wasn't that I wasn't wasn't a big fan. I hadn't seen the play. I live in Georgia, okay? I was asked to do a monologue called <laughs> And I said, I don't think so. I got enough problems. But uh, then you were invited to go see yes, then I went to see Eve. So the feds think that's perfectly okay, apparently. Well, you know, Tom, they're not out to get, you know, Jane Fonda or, you know, Oprah Winfrey. They want they want the people who are at controversy, you know, so then their fines go up towards, uh, you know, the top of the spotlight. So then people in the public see, hey, you know what? our If, if you ever wanted to see how political this is, there's an example of it. There's yeah, an example right. of it right there. Hey, sorry you have to deal with that on a daily basis. Thank you for that. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Is our telephone number. This just in from the Fox News Room. Fox News Radio, I'm Bill Fitka. 
I'm Bill Vitka, and uh, just a second, I apologize for this, but I'm just a little, uh, I, I really apologize for this, as a matter of fact. There actually is a, a newscast here, yeah, but... Um, like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. All women want to do is break your heart and break your wallet, so hit it and quit it. Hit it and quit it. It's the Tom Likes Show. Uh, like his show from Hollywood at one 800 800 tom Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. We continue with your telephone calls at one 800 800 tom Let's say hello here to Diego on the Tom Like His Show. Hey, Tom, how's it going? Okay. Doing all right. I just wanted to talk to you because I know you were talking a couple of days back ago. You were talking about how nobody would, well, what's the thing against Mexicans and uh, blacks? Um, well, I said specifically, just so you know, I, I uh, read an email from a listener. Right, right. And the listener, right. well, no, now we have to say it for everybody because some people might not have heard it. So let me okay. finish it and then you can make your comment. All right. All right. So what the uh, person wrote in and said was that... Uh, he, he believed that uh, the reason that Latinos are supporting Hillary Clinton for president is because Mexicans would vote for anybody to keep someone from becoming a black president. That, that was what he said. And then people called in about that. Right. So you had a comment about that. Yeah, I, I support that, that Mexicans would vote for anyone else except the black person because... From our own experience, and what I know that every Mexican is like wanting, they want to say it, but they're afraid to say it, I guess. But they're lazy, man. Straight up. What? Black people, most black people are lazy. Uh, how can you say that? Where I grew up, the jobs that I've been at, the percentage of a hardworking black man is really low. Uh, I don't think that's true. Let's start with that. Okay. Um, you know, first of all, it is as racist as anything anybody could call it and say. Uh huh. Uh, because it's a major generalization. There are generalizations about Mexicans too, which I won't even repeat, which would offend you and your family and other people. True. Right? Okay. I mean, if I, I, if I picked up the phone and asked you, what are you, a gardener? What are you, a, a, a hedge trimmer? You'd be offended by that, and rightly so. Yeah, you're right. Maybe, maybe I would. I probably would be offended by it. Where'd you get your lunch, a roach coach? If I said that to you, you'd be <laughs> pissed off. <laughs> well, uh, what I was trying to say is... And it, it wouldn't be fair, and it wouldn't be right. What I was trying to say is, by from my personal experience, as far as what I where I've worked and and uh, what I've seen is that most, not all, but most black people. Sorry for saying all, but most black people are lazy. And well, well let's start with life. this. It only has to do with people you know. Maybe you work at the kind of workplace uh, that is bad at hiring people or bad at spotting talent. What would you say that all the jobs that I've had are bad at hiring? People? I don't know what kind of jobs you've had. At 23, I would hope you were in college and you didn't have a whole lot of jobs. No, I'm actually out of college. I'm not even trying to do that right now. Why not? I don't have the money for it, honestly. Why, not, where, why aren't you in community college? Uh, that, get, that began to be a little expensive also. See, I live on my own, so I have to make do with what I make. Yeah, and so what do you do for a living? Well, right now I'm working as a delivery guy, and, nine to five every day. And what is your game plan for going to school? My game plan for going to school is actually saving up money, and uh, well, not enough, 
but enough so that I can get a loan and I won't have to actually pay a lot more back and uh, get into recording engineering. So you're not planning on going to college at all? No. And you're planning on getting into recording engineering right as the uh, music industry is collapsing? It's a what? It's collapsing. What do you mean by that? I mean, the record industry will tell you that because of pirating and downloading, illegal downloads, what have you, uh, right. that, that it's killing their sales. And uh, the record industry has had massive, massive layoffs of employees. So what you're saying, it's not a good idea to actually go to recording engineering school? I'm saying that it is a shrinking industry. Shrinking industry. Okay. Yes. Okay, I get it. So how about college, son? I've been giving it a lot of thought, and the only reason I don't go back is because of money situations. You know what I mean? But you have money to wait. You have money to waste on a trade school. I have money to what? To waste on a trade school. Uh huh. Why couldn't you spend it on a college? True, but see, I didn't know. I didn't know that fact. That see, you know, now I can say without generalizing about other people that maybe you're lazy. I am. I am lazy, but I'll admit. So who are you to call a radio station and accuse an entire race of being lazy? Well, because I see that most most of the jobs that I go to, there are hardly any black people working there. And if they are, I I can say well, that. Well, why, why do you think that is? You're, you're, what are you going to say? Because they're lazy? Well, I see them out in the streets walking around and doing nothing, really. That's why. What about all the black people who are employed? You don't see them. You're right, I don't see them. Right. But then again, the ones that I have seen aren't that much of a hard of hard working people. The ones that I have seen. So I'm solely basing it on that. Right. But now you admit yourself that you're lazy. Oh yeah, but I'm you see, the way I was brought up, either you go to school or you work. That's the way I was brought up. And from what I've seen, most of them don't go to school, most of them don't work. That, well, first of all, most of them do go to work. Uh -huh. That that is false. I mean, even if the unemployment rate among blacks was 20%, which would make it four times the general rate, that would mean 80% are working. Right. So more than half don't work is just, it's false. Oh, uh, not, not from what I've seen. That's all I'm trying but to say. But again, it, how do you explain the employment numbers? You're telling me that at least 51% of black people are unemployed? Uh, No. But you said more than half don't work. What was that? You said more than half don't work. And you only asked me to repeat that so you'd have more time to think up an excuse for why you said that. No, I'm trying to, well, I'm driving. The thing is, I'm... You just right said that, didn't you? More than half of all black people don't work. Uh-huh. You just said that, didn't you? Yeah. That would mean the unemployment rate among blacks is at least 51%, right? Right. Well, you, it's not nowhere near 51%. Well, I could be wrong because I don't have... No, no, it's not that you I'm could totally be you know, It's not it that you could be wrong. You are wrong. Okay, well, I accept that I'm wrong, but I'm saying from what I've seen and from the jobs that I've had, there hasn't been that many that are... But you're at the low end. Right. You know, you're at the end with people who smoke too much weed in high school, the people who knocked up their teenage girlfriends. You're at that end. What do you expect to see around you of any color? Uh -huh. Losers, smokers, jokers, tweakers. That's your group. You're uh -huh. in it. Even if you don't do those things, that's the group you're in. Expect to see plenty of lazy, good-for-nothing people out there of all colors. Okay. Because that's who does jobs like yours. Right. So what about when all the uh, black people say that Mexicans come over here to steal their jobs? How does that happen? Well, first of all, all black people don't say that. What, could you close the door of your car take the key out, please? That's yeah. annoying. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, by, by the way, it isn't just black people who say it. You ever hear of a guy named Lou Dobbs? No. Yeah, he's on CNN, and every night he's on there telling you that Mexicans are coming to this country and taking American jobs every night of the week. That's his show, every night. He's a white guy. I do think that they do come here and take all the jobs, but I don't think it's So then why are you complaining if black people say that? Well, why would they say that if they don't even feel it? 
you tell, uh, this is what I'm trying to say. When you go to a job interview, mm, well, from what I've seen, once again, these are not real facts that I've seen anywhere. Down right at now. the low end of the employment food chain, yeah, what you've seen. Exactly, exactly from the low end. Of which the is the chain. end where you are, yeah, a self-admitted lazy person. Go ahead. Okay. I would be hired before the black guy would. Why would that be? Because one, I can show that I'm a hard worker, and two, they'll know that I'm a hard worker. No matter what it is that I'm doing. Where do you get this idea that black people don't work hard? I've seen it, Tom. I'm telling you, I've but, seen it. But then, so you're telling me that employers are hiring all these lazy people who don't do anything? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. It's, they do. Why would they? Why would employers do that? I have no idea, but mm. I know that from the from the personal experience that I've had and all the jobs that I've been, there aren't that many black people, for one, and two, when there are, those are the ones that are lazy. And everyone around the work area knows that they're lazy. But, but you're lazy. Maybe people don't know you're lazy because you're Mexican-American and the, they're African-American. Maybe, 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 maybe all the people who work at your place are lazy. No, but I mean, I'm lazy when it comes to college. When it comes to getting up and going to school, that's what I'm lazy about. Well, well guess I mean. what? That laziness is laziness. I don't care what you're lazy about. Okay. You could okay. achieve a lot more, but you're too lazy to do it. Right. So there's degrees of lazy, and who really cares which degree you're at? You're lazy, other people are lazy, so what? You're not in a position to criticize other people for being lazy, number one. Uh, number two, your facts are wrong. More than half of black people are not unemployed. Okay. It's not true. And it doesn't do any good living in a community as we do in Southern California to be calling radio programs and saying stuff like that. It only fans the flames of this stuff. Huh. Well, Tom, I was just going off of All I know is that uh, when, when uh, uh, in, in the suburbs of Chicago, when a Walmart opens or a Costco, there are lines around the block of black people trying to get those jobs. Right. Lines of them. All right. So what would happen if uh, there were a lot of Mexicans down in Chicago? Who do you think would get the jobs? And who would you... Well, why would you... Well, again, that could also be attributable to discrimination. Who knows? Right. But I'm saying, I mean, if, if it were the case that, let's say, a Walmart opened up in... Uh, somewhere else and there was the same amount of black people and the same amount of mexican people who do you think that the employers would hire well again i uh, you know the, that doesn't prove anything all it proves it could be proving discrimination and i'm not going right. to keep repeating myself okay all right all right, all right. <laughs> i had to bleep myself that's how that's how annoying that was this is freaking painful Jesus. I didn't say the whole word. We could have let that go, but <clears throat> better safe than sorry. 1-800-5-800-TOM. Can you believe what that guy was saying? Jesus. Uh, Blake on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much, Blake. I wanted to call in and talk to you about this whole Jane Fonda issue on TV. I think it's just absolutely rid ridiculous when stuff like this happens because women like her go on these shows and try to act like the liberated woman and uh, try to get away with as much as possible. And, uh, it, you know, if a guy was to do that in any guy show, you know, how many people would be vouching for that person and saying, you know, defending them? They'd call him, you know, sick or, uh, you know, crude. And, you know, in the case of women... If they were to be um, confronted by any group of people and condemned for it, every single middle-aged housewife would be, you know, vouching for them. So I just think it's kind of ridiculous. Well, it is ridiculous. And uh, again, it's just another one of the hypocrisies in this country. Definitely, definitely. And you know what? I'm kind of nervous, too, because it seems like from what I've seen that Hillary Clinton isn't necessarily going to uh, help that issue any. I think that she also is, you know, at least at the beginning of her campaign, she was trying to be the voice of the liberated woman as well. And, um, you know, I'm not, you know, putting down her candidacy or anything like that, but uh, I'm a little nervous about what she'll 
uh, do as far as those things are concerned. Well, whatever she tries to do, she's got to deal with Congress. Yeah, exactly. And we'll see yeah. if Congress will actually uh, pass uh, all the things she tries to get passed. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.